me about Syrah. Tell you about Syrah. Uh, well, it's one of my favorite wines. I uh, really, really enjoy drinking the, the stuff out of the Rhone, and um, that's basically what I try and base my wine on. Um, try and work with all the whole bunches, although they've moved away from whole bunches in, in, in Cote Roti and some of the other places, trying to maybe get better parker scores. I don't know, but I still believe in the old traditional ways, and um, yeah, just interesting wines. So, you, you work quite traditionally then? Yeah, I know. We try and do as little as possible in the vineyard and do as much in the vineyards um, and then when it comes to picking uh, we basically sort a little bit in the vineyard and then uh, everything goes in and work as lightly as possible. Tell me about your vineyards. Uh, well it's all uh, planted on the Porcelainberg, the, the, the mountain is shale, um, the whole property is on top of a mountain um, so basically with the sort of movements of topsoil sort of generally tends to move down, down slope and we stuck with the least top soil and uh, the bedrock is like a foot be be uh, below the top soil and it's 100% bedrock. Um, after working we have about 50 to 70% um, solids um, which is very rare in South Africa. The soils are known to be the oldest in the world so they're very weathered so you end up with basically soil instead of any solids and we're the other way around. Um, so it's open structure, roots can penetrate, um, access the sort of sub uh, you know, the moisture, the reserve tanks at the bottom, which sort of carries in through um, heat waves and things like that, which retains uh, the sort of natural freshness without any additions or any manipulations or anything like that. You think there's a lot of buzz about Syrah in South Africa, South Africa generally? Is it, is it a variety that's getting more Yeah, the yeah no, it definitely is. I mean, there's still, there's still quite a few produced in the sort of the Aussie, Aussie, Aussie way, um, and then there's a couple produced. Yeah, it's, it's quite a difficult thing. I'm a farmer. I don't really get too much involved in. I like drinking wines. I like drinking. So uh, yeah, but Syrah is definitely sure is definitely gaining speed. I think, and people are sort of learning new ways to work with it. And yeah, it's going to be an ex exciting and interesting thing to watch. So um, I've been very impressed by your Syrah, um, or Shiraz, whatever you want to call it. Um, yep. Tell me a bit about Syrah in South Africa. Do you think it's got lots of potential here? I think it is. Uh, you know, we've, Syrah in the beginning struggled, but mostly because maybe we didn't plant it always on the, on the correct sites, and also the vineyards were quite young. Um, and nowadays you find that you know, there's quite a big range of Syrah available in terms of style, you know, from the warmer areas, which is maybe a bit bigger, sort of more, more new world in style. And, um, but what you do find is, and that's what we try to grow, is Syrah from cooler areas. So to go more for the classic, more wines with a bit more finesse and elegance, um, a bit more perfuminess, and, and, and that's what that's the style of wine that we like and that we try to produce. Yeah. And do you um, do you think picking is an important issue? Picking time when you pick the grapes. Yes, it's incredibly uh, important. You know, I've I've found since, ever since I started with Waterkloof and 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 work on the property that, that you know we we sort of as winemakers have to recalibrate our palates because we generally we pick too ripe. You know what we think is as optimal ripeness is maybe too far. So we've worked quite a bit in the last sort of year or two at Vardadov on trying to pick earlier. And for example, I said the, um, the Shiraz you have to be very careful because I don't think there's any, you know, that much green flavours in Shiraz. It's just a case of getting nice balance and more freshness into the wine. And, and maybe we should pick a bit earlier for that. You know, and certain areas you definitely can. And I gather you've been using some stems in your fermentations. Yeah. Tell me about that. We've, uh, you know, we've played around ever since we started with Vatatuf to, to look at stems and how it you know, how, what, what influence it has in our wine. And all the Rhone varietals, our Mouvet, Syrah and Grenache, we ferment on the stems. Obviously it depends on vintage, because some years are warmer, you use less, you know, you, you have to taste and you have to, you have to decide. But uh, it's, it's a cool area, so we can ferment on stems, and, and at the moment we ferment on 100% of the stems where we can. What does it bring to the wine? Two things. It brings a, a fine tannin, a very fine elegant tannin to the wine, and it brings a freshness, almost an acidity, a type of acidity and a freshness to, to the Syrah and Grenache. Yes. Sarah, tell me about Sarah. Yeah, Sarah, it's, look, it's another grape which I think belongs here, along with, you know, Carrion Grenache and Mauvais. Um, obviously, there's a lot more wines that we can explore, grape varieties that we can explore in this country. But I think, you know, from a market, a marketing point of view, um, 
not the, you know, all about marketing, but I say it's a grape that people can understand and relate to. You know, it's important for South Africa at the moment to find varieties that people can actually, you know, this is South Africa, this is what we should be doing. But I think Syrah, you know, it's, again, it's traditional home is, you know, everyone knows the south of France is a rain. Um, and this is where, you know, it's similar climates, you know, it's dry, it's harsh to the swart lands, even, you know, Mediterranean. Uh, and it's, when you make it with quite a bit of stems, it, it brings out that natural freshness if you pick it right. And obviously farming correctly is the major thing. You have to be able to farm properly to pick early. But Syrah can bring those spices. I'm not trying to make cotton tea, you're not trying to make, but you're trying to make a, a South African Syrah, but it's still representative of the brand. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so you've been working with some stems with the Syrah then? Yeah, a lot. I do a combination between, depending on how I feel and on the vintage and where I think the vintage is going, you know, where you look at the grapes and the stems, but up anything from 100% down to 45%, something like that, stems, yeah. And what do they give to the wine? Well, the stems give, they do give, it sounds weird because the stems are high in potassium, which would increase the pH naturally, but this is why I don't extract anything. I just take a bucket of juice and I just wet the cap. Um, you know, it sounds a lot like what uh, Dirk Nieport's doing in, you know, in Austria, you know, the Blau Frank is saying similar thing. Just trying to, you don't extract, so you don't get the harshness from the stems. You do chew the stems to check the ripeness. Um, not every single stem, but some of them. And then, uh, but what the stems give, it's, I think it, it gives a balance. It, it's difficult to drink early, uh, but, you know, we're not trying to make wines that you can... Sarah, I think you can make very early if you want, but then, you know, the stems just can make wine age for a long time. So we, the nice thing about Syrah in this country is that you have uh, different uh, growing areas and Syrah performs quite well. So you have more the cold growing places like coastal, Walker Bay, Hemlin Arten for example, or you can go to uh, Swartland, warmer grow uh, places and uh, both give exciting uh, wines. The cultivars can reflect uh, some terroir expression who also is a very um, nice thing to achieve in red wines. Yeah. And I think over time I reckon the full potential we will get when our vineyards uh, reaching at 20 years plus age. And you're making Sarah in Hemlinade, yeah, in the, in the red shirt, so you're, you're relatively cool climate for South Africa then, yeah? Yes, that is right, but when we're talking a uh, cool climate, we always have to put it in context to South Africa, but basically means when I compare it into Europe, we are still uh, pretty moderate and warm. Yeah. And I think the one big advantage against South Africa, against Europe, is you have a very nice uh, weather window into uh, April, May. That means when you're growing in a later region, you have still plenty of opportunities to hang your grapes to the optimum ripening. And uh, therefore, um, I think it's not so stressful uh, when we're planting a slightly more uh, warmer climate grapes in these uh, colder places along the coastlines. And what are you looking for in Sarah? I think I quite personally, I quite like to have this um, uh, this uh, more uh, peppery uh, Northern Rhone Valley uh, stylistic. But um, I think Syrah should always keep the finesse. So even when you maybe might go in alcohol slightly up, you should always keep uh, maintaining a good natural acidity with a lower pH. And um, I quite like when we're talking about, as much we talk in Pinot Noir about finesse, I also think uh, Syrah should also keep, or as we call it Syrah, should also keep a good uh, finesse in the product. I mean, it always strikes me that there's, a, there's an affinity between the best Syrahs and the best Pinot Noirs. There's almost a family affinity in the sense that you're looking for elegance in both of them. And, you know, top northern Rome wines, in my, my experience, are almost have a Burgundian feel to them. Is, is that, would you agree with that? Uh, I would fully agree on that one. I, I really think that uh, uh, this kind of, uh, of uh, high-end product, quality-wise, they really can be just regarded as high-end when they really can keep their finesse and the soonest the uh, wine becomes flabby. And when I'm talking about finesse, often it's also maybe a little bit misused as a term, but i basically judging often the wines that when you drink one or two glasses of wine and you still be refreshing in your mouth feel that you can drink a third glass, that is pretty much the best compliment the wine can achieve. And I think that is uh, definitely some places uh, in cold climate you can uh, do so. And um, in the cellar, do you do anything different with, with Sarah? What, what, what are you looking to do with Sarah once you get to the cellar? Do you use whole bunches at all? We, um, we also go the route with uh, some percentage whole bunches, but I was personally trained as a Pinot Noir winemaker, and I think when you train as a Pinot Noir winemaker and you handle the red wine cultivar like Pinot Noir, it's a pretty safe route. So you are handling everything very carefully, you do not over extract, you don't push too hard, you don't use too much new wood, and uh, 
therefore uh, I think you really have to let it play by nature and not interfere too much. But um, nevertheless, I think there's always a place for improvements to make small uh, adjustments, and uh, we also open for new ideas. And uh, as you mentioned, with the with the whole bunches, we also starting on our estate with some batches. We go in with 10, 20 percent whole bunches, and the results they're looking very promising.